Bente. Can I request the three refuges and the eight virtues, please? And possibly the qualities of the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Okay. Thank you. We will begin with Namo Tassa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhassa. Homage to the Blessed Teacher, the Arahant, the perfectly all awakened Buddha. Buddhang Saranangachami. Dhammang Saranangachami. Sanghang Saranang Gachami. I go to the Buddha as a refuge. I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. I go to the Sangha as a refuge. Dutiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami. Dutiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami. Dutiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami. For a second time, I go to the Buddha as a refuge. For a second time, I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. For a second time, I go to the Sangha as a refuge. Tatiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami. Tatiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami. Tatiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami. For a third time, I go to the Buddha as a refuge. For a third time, I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. For a third time, I go to the Sangha as a refuge. And now the virtues. Panati pata we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from hurting living beings on purpose. Adina dana we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from taking what is not given. Kame sumi chachara we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from sexual misconduct. Musawada we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from false speech. Sura Miraya Madja Pamadatana We Ramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from all mind altering substances. We Kala Bhojana We Ramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami. I undertake the practice. To refrain from eating at improper times. Natcha gita vadita visuka dasana mala ganda vilepana dharana mandana vibhusanatana viramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from dancing, singing, listening to music, seeing entertainment shows, wearing necklaces, perfumes, and beautifying the body with cosmetics. Ucha sayana maha sayana we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from high and luxurious beds and seats. Silena sugati nyanti, silena boga sampada, silena nibukti nyanti, tasama sila wisodaye. By virtue, a good life is obtained. By virtue, success comes to be. By virtue, one is unbinded. This virtue is to be perfected. Sad.
I will recite the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha Vandana. This is what it is called, the, the good qualities of the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. I will first recite all three of them in Pali, as it is customary, and then I will read the English version. Itipi so bhagavara ham samma sambuddho Vija charana sampanno sugato lo kavidu Anuttero puri sadhamma sarati Satha deva manusanang buddho bhagavati Swakato bhagavata dhammo Sanditti ko akali ko ei passi ko panai ko pachatang vedita bo vinyu hiti supati panno bhagavato savaka sango ujupati panno bhagavato savaka sango Nyaya pati panno bhagavato sawaka sango Sami chi pati panno bhagavato sawaka sango Nyadirang chattari puri sayugani atta puri sapugala Esa bhagavato sawaka sango Ahuneyo pahuneyo dakineyo anjali karaneyo enutterang punya ke tanglo kasati. The exalted one is an arahant, perfectly all awakened, endowed with knowledge and conduct, auspicious, knower of the worlds unsurpassed guide for those who seek self-mastery, teacher of devas and humans, awakened and blessed. Well explained is the Blessed One's teaching, directly visible, immediate, inviting, leading upwards, to be experienced by oneself, by the wise, for oneself. Good is the practice of the Awakened One's Sangha. Straight is the practice of the Awakened One's Sangha. Wise is the practice of the Awakened One's Sangha. Meaningful is the practice of the Awakened One's Sangha. That is to say, the four pairs of people, the eight kinds of individuals. The Sangha of the Awakened One is worthy of offerings, worthy of hospitality and generosity and respect, an unsurpassed field of goodness for the universe. And today, instead of reading the verses of the Dhammapada, I will be reading a bit more about um, this is a, a sutta that is called Dhamma Chetya. It's the memorial of the Dhamma, the memorial of the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. And it talks about some very uh, interesting, wonderful qualities of this Dhamma and the teacher. And <clears throat> this sutta is... Um, in fact, expounded by the, the king, uh, Pasenadi of Kosala, who goes to visit the Buddha. And he was a very uh, loving follower of his teaching and, and him. And he explains why in this sutta. And this is both at the end of their lives. They were about the same age, the king Pasenadi of Kosala and the Buddha. And so this, this is, um, usually I read this because sometimes people think that the Buddha did not teach smiling. <laughs> he did not teach smiling maybe directly, but in so many ways we can find direct evidence of this. And 
uh, this is a, there is one passage in this sutta in particular that makes it quite clear that the monks were fairly uh, were doing well and were quite happy and uplifted. <laughs> so this is the memorial of the Dhamma, and this is number eighty nine in the mid length discourses. Thus have I heard once the beloved teacher was living with the Sakyans in Medalumpa, a small Sakyan town. The Buddha was a Sakyan, so this is his home, home country. At that time, the King Pasanadi of Kosala arrived at, in Nagaraka on some errands. Then the king said to his esquire, Karanaya the Tall, Good Karanaya, Harness the finest carriage. We are going to the lovely meadow to see its beauty. As you please, your majesty, he answered. And he, are, he harnessed the finest carriage for the king and announced, A fine carriage has been harnessed, your majesty. You may go at any suitable time. The king then climbed aboard and left Nagaraka in the full splendor of royal pomp and set forth to the park. Having gone as far as the carriage would allow, <clears throat> he descended from, from it and walked the rest of the way. When he finally reached the park, the king went for a leisure walk, walking over there, walking over here. And there he discovered roots of trees, which were remarkably beautiful, uplifting, quiet, far from human voice, breathing solitude, away from the presence of man, perfectly conducive for retreat. Upon seeing this, he remembered the Buddha, those roots of trees are remarkably beautiful and uplifting, perfect, perfectly conducive for retreat, just as when we attend on, on the worthy Arahant, the perfectly all-awakened Buddha. Then the king, the king said to Karanaya the tall, Isn't it so, good Karanaya? Good Karanaya, where does the teacher, the Arahant, reside now? There is a Sakyan village named Medalumpa, your majesty. This is where the awakened one resides at the moment. How far is this town, good Karanaya? Not very far, your majesty, three Yojanas. It is possible to make it there before sundown. Then, my good Karanaya, ready this finest carriage. We are going to see the perfectly all-awakened Buddha. Then Karanaya the tall prepared the carriage and announced it to the king. The king, Pasanadi of Kosala, embarked, and they left from Nagaraka to Medalumpa. Before sundown, they reached Medalumpa and made it for the park. Having gone as far as the ground would allow, they alighted and continued on foot. On that occasion, there was a great number of monks walking about in the open. The king then went to these monks and asked, Dear Bhante, where is the Bhagawa, the Arahant, completely all awakened one, residing? We long to see the Buddha. This is his residence, your majesty, with the closed door. Approach quietly. Without rushing, go to the porch, scratch your throat and knock on the door. The teacher will open the door for you. Then the king Pasanadi of Kosala gave his sword and royal turban to Karanaya the tall. And Karanaya thought, the king is now going into a private meeting. I will stand here and wait. The king then went to the residence, approaching quietly, without rushing. He went to the porch, scratched his throat, and knocked on the door. The teacher opened the door. When the king entered the dwelling, 
he fell with his head at the feet of the awakened one, cover his feet with kisses, lovingly rubbed his feet with his hands, and announced himself, I am King Pasanadi of Kosala Bhante. I am King Pasanadi of Kosala. Just in case you didn't recognize him without his royal attire. <laughs> what reason do you see, great king, to pay such supreme respects to this body and for exhibiting such striking display of affection? There is for me clear evidence about the Awakened One's teaching, Bhante, that the teacher is a perfectly all-awakened Buddha. The Dhamma is rightly spoken, and the Sangha is practicing properly. Often, Bhante, often, Bhante I see some monks or Brahmins who have reached the climax in their practice, who stopped making progress, who live an incomplete spiritual life for about 10 years, some maybe 20, some 30, some 40 years. Sometime afterwards, I see them all bathed clean, all scented in perfumes, with groomed hair and beards, given, bent, and immersed in the five objects of sensory pleasures. But here, Bhante, I see monks who live the spiritual life for as long as their life lasts, for as long as they breathe, they are realized and thoroughly cleansed. I see none outside this community who lives such fully realized and thoroughly cleansed spiritual life. Therefore, Bhante, there is for me clear evidence about the Awakened One's teaching thus. The teacher is a perfectly all-awakened Buddha. The Dhamma is rightly spoken, and the Sangha is practicing properly. Further, Bhante, kings quarrels with kings, warriors qu quarrels with warriors, Brahmins fight with Brahmins, householders with householders, mother with their children children with their mothers, fathers with children, children with fathers, brothers with sisters, sisters with brothers, friends against friends. But here, Bhante, I see monks who live in unity, harmoniously, without dispute, coexisting like milk and water, looking at one another with caring eyes. And I see none outside this community the company who lives so united. Therefore, Bhante, there is for me clear evidence about the Awakened One's teaching thus. The, teaching is, the teacher is a perfectly all-awakened Buddha. The Dhamma is rightly pro proclaimed, and the Sangha is practicing properly. Further, Bhante, I walk and tour around from one park to another, from one meadow to another, from one garden grove to another. There I see all kinds of monks and spiritual practitioners, many of who are emaciated, rough-looking, sick-looking, extremely pale and discolored, their veins protruding all over them. Laying eyes upon them, one would think that they are jailmates. Thus, Bhante, we ponder, surely these venerable ones must live the spiritual life in complete displeasure. Surely they have committed terrible actions in the past for them to look so. And this refers to all these austere, austere practices at that time, mainly. We don't really have this at our time, but there was a lot of very severe uh, austere, austerity. But here, Bhante, I see monks laughing and smiling, exalting joy, displaying sheer delight, living in bliss, unconcerned, pacified, 
living on generosity, their minds aloof like wild deers. Then, Bhante, we think, surely these venerable ones have realized glorious and unprecedented mental achievements, by which they live laughing and smiling, exulting joy, exhibiting sheer delight, living in bliss, unconcerned, pacified, living on generosity, their minds aloof like wild deers. Therefore, Bhante, there is for me clear evidence about the awakened one's teaching thus. The teacher is a perfectly all-awakened Buddha. The Dhamma is rightly spoken. The Sangha is practicing properly. Moreover, Bhante, I am a quite well-known Katiya king of the ruling caste, empowered to execute those who should be executed, find those who should be fined, and exile those who should be exiled. But Bhante, when treating such a case, others repeatedly break in when I speak. So much so, I do not even get the chance to say, Good sirs, do not interrupt me when I speak treating a case. Wait until my talk has come to an end. Thus, Bhante, others repeatedly break in on my speech. But here, Bhante, I see monks. On some occasions, when the awakened one is teaching Dhamma, to an audience of many hundreds of monks. Neither a sneeze nor a cough is to be heard from the monks. Once Bhante, the beloved teacher, was teaching Dhamma to an assembly of many hundreds. Then a certain monk cleared his throat, and his fellow brother monk nudged him with his knee, saying, Be quiet, venerable, do not make a sound. Do you not see that the teacher, the awakened Buddha, is teaching Dhamma? Then Bhante, we thought, how astounding, how amazing, how is it possible for any such assembly to be of such composure without stick or sword? Never have we encountered anywhere else an assembly of such composure and deportment. Therefore, Bhante, there is for me clear evidence about the Awakened One's teaching thus. The teacher is a perfectly all-awakened Buddha. The Dhamma is rightly spoken, and the Sangha is practicing properly. Further, Bhante, I sometimes see clever rulers and warriors of the ruling caste clever Brahmin priests, clever lay meditators, and clever monks who are ingenious, skilled in the art of debate, renowned for splitting hair. They tour around, crushing others' teachings with the sharpness of wit and their intellect. They hear... Rumor has it, good sir, that the wanderer Gotama is approaching such village or country. They then prepare their questions, thinking, When the monk Gotama arrives, we will put this question to him. If he answers, if, if he is asked like this, he will answer in that way. Having answered in that way, we will refute him in this way. And if he asks, if, if he is asked that, he will answer in this way. Having answered in this way, we will refute him in that other way. They then hear, Rumor has it, good sir, that the wanderer Gotama has arrived. They approach the awakened one. Then the awakened one directly shows them, moves them, sharpens them and gladdens them by a talk on the good Dhamma. After the Awakened One has done so, they do, not, they do not so much as ask their question, what to say then of refuting his teaching. 
On the contrary, they beg permission to the awakened one to leave behind the house life for the homeless spiritual life, and they ordain under the awakened one. And after having gone forth as monks, dwelling alone, secluded, attentive, intent, and resolute, in no long time they attain the purpose for which sons and daughters of good families honestly leave their home and become homeless, seeking for the highest, the complete perfection of the spiritual life. And having realized, and having realized it, in this present life, by their own direct experience, they abide in it. They then say to me, we were very nearly lost, we very nearly went astray, for in the past, not being true monks, we would have sworn that we were, not being true spiritual people, we would have sworn that we were. Not being fully awakened, we would have sworn that we were. But now we are truly monks, we are truly spiritual people, and we truly are fully awakened. Therefore, Bhante, there is for me clear evidence about the awakened one's teaching thus. The teacher is an all-awakened Buddha, the Dhamma is well spoken, and the Sangha is practicing properly. Further, monks, further, Bhante, <clears throat> my two officers, Isidatta and Purana, whom I feed, whom I offer vehicles, for whom I provide a living, and to whom I bring glory and success, they do not nearly show me the same respect as they do the awakened one. Once, Bhante, when the army was marching out, investigating some country, a time came when we had to put up with tight, uncomfortable quarters for some time. At that time, Bhante, on many occasions, my two officers would speak about the Dhamma for most of the night. And they would finally lay down with their heads pointing in the direction of the Buddha, and their feet towards me. This is fairly, uh, this doesn't mean much to us, but in Asia, pointing your feet at someone is very disrespectful. <laughs> so pointing your, your feet at your, at your king and boss and person who uh, gives you all the wealth that you have is quite interesting. Bhante, we cannot help but think how astounding, how unbelievable, my two officers, Isidatta and Purana, whom I feed, whom I offer vehicles, for whom I provide a living, and to whom I bring glory and success. They do not nearly show me the same respect as they do the awakened one. Surely these venerable ones have realized glorious and unprecedented mental achievements. Therefore, Bhante, there is for me clear evidence about the Awakened One's teaching thus. The teacher is a perfectly all-awakened Buddha. The Dhamma is rightly spoken. The Sangha is practicing properly. Further, Bhante, the Awakened One is from the ruling caste, the Katiya caste, and I am from the ruling caste. The Awakened One is a Kosalan, and I am a Kosalan. The Awakened One is about 80 years of age, and I am about 80 years of age. This is the reason why, Bhante, we are showing such striking display of affection towards the Illuminated One. But now we must depart, as much requires our attention, and we have much to do, Bhante. Do now as you please, Your Majesty. And at that time, the King Pasanadi of Kosala paid loving respects to the teacher, stood and left. Then, shortly after the king had left, the teacher addressed the monks, saying, Monks, today the King Pasanadi of Kosala declared the great memorial of the Dhamma. Monks, 
Remember the memorial of the Dhamma. Understand the memorial of the Dhamma. And bear in mind this memorial of the Dhamma. For the memorial of the Dhamma is conducive to happiness and it touches to the core of this spiritual life. And on this, I wish you a wonderful day full of smile and good meditation and happiness. Continue your own practice continually, not giving up, not giving up the smiling, not giving up the vehicle of your awareness that you're developing. And I wish you happiness and success.